bread is deeply nostalgic and tied to so many memories. It's such an evocative food. You can have it sweet, you can have it salty. It's just tangy and delicious. It's the coolest thing ever to take this carbohydrate and turn it into protein. It allows for human existence. Crunchy on the outside and elastic on the inside. Smelling of yeast, I love it. Anyone can make bread and that's fantastic, but making really, really good bread is really hard. People spend years perfecting their bread making technique. I like it to get a lot of color. Not too much dark, but really brown. But some people doesn't like that. Some people like it darker than me. It depends on who is baking it and how you love it. Every food culture uses grain. Grain is a food that expands and it's natural that people would base their diet on a food that actually gives you more than the sum of its parts. This is why it's such an important part of people's diets because it's economical, it's sustainable. Bread can be made on three ingredients, right? Flour, water, and salt. But there are a couple other considerations that I think are crucial to really making a perfect loaf of bread and making the same loaf of bread every time, and that's temperature and time. Certain doughs will like to ferment at a certain temperature, and certain doughs might be warmer or cooler, and certain doughs are very, very fast. But understanding how those two variables fit in to the baking process are crucial to making good bread. So it takes discipline, it takes intuition, and it takes a lot of practice. The longer we ferment a grain, the easier it is for our bodies to break it down. There's something called phytic acid that's naturally present in grain and can inhibit the body from absorbing certain vitamins and minerals. And when you use a sourdough base in a bread, the acid in the sourdough neutralizes the effect of the phytic acid and in essence makes the bread healthier for you. So in order to make a loaf of sourdough bread, you need a starter, which is a live culture. And that's its own incredibly fascinating thing because it's alive and you can pass it on. A neighbor actually brought the starter in when we first opened. It's like, this is my family's starter. We have sourdough pancakes that we've been doing for generations. So it's third generation from her. And then we've just been using it ever since. It's gotta be at least 100 years old. Our sourdough came from the Klondike in Canada and it was started in like 1896. So it's a very nourishing thing that this bacteria is being passed all over the world and sort of showing up on people's tables. It's like you're eating history. It's, it's incredible to think that you're eating something that was made with an ingredient that is alive and that has been alive longer than, than you have. Bread is the foundation of our daily meals. It's the number one food on the tables of people all over the world. A few years ago, Oprah came out with an ad for Weight Watchers. She's one of their uh, spokespeople. It was just this very simple, short video in which she said, This is the joy for me. I love bread. Really, the message I is that you, it's OK to eat bread, <laughs> which I think people really responded to. I think it resonated because bread has been very villainized. Atkins diet books have sold in their millions, in Britain second only to sales of Harry Potter books. I was a teenager at the height of the Atkins diet, so that was like the early aughts. To me, it seemed like a worldwide phenomenon, this idea that carbs should be avoided at all costs. And I remember watching people scoop out bagels. <laughs> that was such a poignant image. Low carbohydrate diets go as far back as anybody was writing about diets. People have always talked about not eating too many foods with carbohydrates because they taste good, people like them and tend to eat a lot of them. But I think the current carbohydrate craze came when obesity became a big problem in American society. And that started in about 1980. That was when the number of calories in the food supply increased dramatically and went from about 3,000 a day per person to about 4,000 a day. If you're a food company, you've got to sell food in that kind of an environment. And that's when calories started getting pushed on us. People became very concerned about dieting. 
Well, I'm especially suspicious of the paleo diet, given that humans in the Paleolithic period didn't live <laughs> that long. So the idea that eating in that way will extend your life seems slightly suspect to me. Well, when I hear about the paleo diet, I think the people who invented it didn't really know very much about what people ate 50,000 years ago, because guess what? We can't even figure out what people ate yesterday. Nobody wants to read, eat your veggies and balance your calories. That's so boring. But everybody loves diet books that have simple solutions. Formerly, most bread was made in the home, but it took experience and a lot of hard work to turn out good bread every time. There's definitely good bread and there's bad bread. I grew up with bad bread. It was supermarket packaged white bread loaded with additives, no fermentation, lots of sugars and artificial ingredients. And I, that bread is not good for people. And I think a lot of us grew up with bread like that and maybe still eat bread like that. And so, yeah, it's making us sick. This is a manufactured commercial bread. The bran and the germ have been removed from the flour that made this bread. That makes it less nutritious, but it makes its texture more pleasing to a lot of people. It has an ingredient list that must have 50 ingredients in it. A really good bread only requires five ingredients. Soft, delicious, nutritious, an American classic what it is. There's definitely been an explosion of bread fanatics on Instagram, particularly sourdough has become a real hobby for people. There's really kind of no end to the experimenting and noodling you can do, and it's pretty wonky. You can get really, really into it. Oh, you hear that, Vinny? Sounds like you're a cabeza. I do think carbs are making a comeback. Bread has become a menu item in a way that it didn't used to be. It's really an art. And to me, it's one of the best parts of a meal if it's done well. Will the vilification of carbs continue? I hope not. I wish people could enjoy what they eat and not worry about this so much. As the world has gotten more chaotic, as the news has gotten worse and worse, people are looking for things to throw themselves into. And I think making bread is a really tactile experience that really requires a lot of focus and time. And I think it's sort of the ultimate hobby for our age in a way that you, you really have to turn off. <laughs>